Okay, welcome to uh, week two, session one. Uh, hopefully you are, uh, you received my feedback, Melissa, on the assignment from week one. I think there was a little bit of confusion on what was uh, one, what was required for that project. So go ahead and reread through that. Um, the idea is to not actually place the artwork of the person that you're inspired by for the, the movement of the piece into the card itself, but to take the elements, just um, simple color um, and typography to create your business cards. You are to show the, th the three different art movements separately. So I, I did do a demonstration on this um, in last week's lecture. So if you need extra help and clarification, definitely review that. All right, so this is week two, session one. We will also be meeting on Friday. It's kind of not, I don't like to do Friday meetups, but because you are the only one in this class, we're going to, you know, things have been sped up and things have been just a little um, rearranged during the weeks, during a uh, regular schedule. So I apologize for the late lecture and hopefully, um, Hopefully it won't be too bad because I think most of the stuff that we're going to cover is today anyway in this lecture. Um, but, you know, if you need extra help, just definitely reach out to me and let me know. Okay, so just a little review. review. We're going to have um, of past terminology and things that we have covered um, so far in this, in this class as we started in week one. We'll, we'll definitely do a little review talk about color vibrations and you know I just kind of gave you the feedback for assignment one so we won't really be looking at anything today normally we would kind of bring everybody's um, work in and of course this is a little bit of a different class because we only have one student in it so <laughs> kind of bear with me on on that um, you know we kind of change it up and customize it based on how many students are in here Okay, the learning objectives. Let's go ahead and take a look after we, we read through these in week one. Um, we're going to be discussing how color choice impacts consumer purchasing and audience appeal. Apply appropriate color usage proportions to illustrate three abstract color relationships. And we're going to discuss the role color plays in the five design elements. So line, shape, color, value, and texture. Let's go ahead and open up <coughs> Canvas here. So if you go into week two, all of these pretty much we kind of just went over one, two, three. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's also a little short video in here um, talking about how color affects your mood, kind of an interesting uh, short uh, video there. Don't forget course media page section also. Um, there is required, let's see, week two, required um, readings and videos. So there's a um, visual elements, basic things that can be seen, uh, PDF here, Customize, customizing brushes in Photoshop. And that's chapter one, and then chapter two goes into more of, um, more about brushes and um, you know kind of enhancing the tool itself okay so don't forget about that let's go back to your slides here I'm still kind of having allergy problems, so I might be a little nasally and sniffly and coughing. I apologize. I, uh, I did take a Claritin today, but it's one of those things. You just have to bear with me here. <laughs> All right, we talked about color theory a little bit in week one, what, what, it, what it is, the terminology, um, and basic information that you need to know about color theory. Color theory is a set of guiding principles that can be used to create harmonious color combinations. So we learned about that last week. These ideas are represented in a variety of diagrams, so color wheels, triangles, and charts that help designers understand color interactions, select and combine colors, and construct pleasing and effective palettes. <clears throat> so color theory, you know, it guides us as designers. 
we kind of go through harmonious color co combinations for particular projects um, and we use them you know harmoniously together to create an effective and hopefully persuasive piece for whatever you're kind of designing for. So it's great to know, you know, what works and what doesn't work. Guiding principles and harmonious output kind of all go hand in hand. Um, here's a little bit of a review here. We talked about these, uh, the terminology down here. So I'm going to kind of read this out and you kind of try to uh, match the best answer here to the, the keywords on the left to the words to the right. So to add more depth to the basic colors in the color wheel, we can create tints, tones, and shades. Match how each are created with pigments. So kind of visually know, okay, what does tint mean? Does it mean hue plus gray, hue plus white, or hue plus black? Does tone mean hue plus gray, hue plus white, hue plus black? And what does shade mean? Try to match it up in your head. And we talked about this the last time we met up here, so hopefully you got it right. So tint is hue plus white. That's a little tricky because when we think about tint, we think about like tinted windows, you know, being darker. But it really means it's a color like a hue plus white. Tone is hue and gray and shade is hue and black. If a color is grayed down, what else is most likely true of it? Is which answer is the best uh, for this question? It is a pure hue, it is a shade, it is a tone, or is it a tint? <coughs> if you said two, you're right, it is a shade. Kind of went over that as well last, last week. Excuse me. When a tone is created, what happens to the color? It gets darker, it gets lighter, or it gets desaturated. When you, if you said it gets desaturated, you are correct. That is the answer we were looking for. Okay, pastel colors have what relationship to the pure color? They are primary colors. They are tints of the colors, or are they also pure colors? That's the best answer here. Number two, if you said two, you're right. They are tints of the colors. Remember, tint is lighter. If you're targeting an older, more professional audience, what type of colors are you, you more likely to use? Tints, tones, shades, or pure hues? The best answer you think. If you said shades, you're right because it's darker, kind of more mature audience. Traditionally, uh, where on the color wheel do warm colors reside? Are they usually in the upper left half, lower left half, lower right half, or upper right half? <coughs> So if you take a look at this, you would probably say what? Upper right half. If colors are said to advance, what is also most likely true of them? The colors are tints, the colors are cool, the colors are tones, or the colors are warm. If you said four, the colors are warm, you are correct. So advance, that means come forward. A recede is going backwards. Orange, yellow, and red are known as what type of colors? Cool colors, warm colors, complementary colors, or triadic. This is kind of an easy one, right? Two, warm colors. Please match the following colors with their perceived temperatures. So on the left, you have purple, dark green, magenta, and indigo. A little tricky there. So visually kind of match it up on the right. Okay. So purple would be more cool, dark green would be cool, magenta would be warm, and indigo would be cool. 
If colors are said to retreat, what also is me most likely true of them? They are warm, they are cool, they are neutral, they are pastel. I think I said this in a different way just recently. You said they are cool, you're right, I said recede. <coughs> Retreat is probably a better word there. When did Newton, Newton begin his experiments with color? 1540s, 1660s, 1720s, or 1760s? 1660s, reading about that last week. According to Newton, what, how is color created? Light alone, mental perception alone, physical substances, feelings, and emotions. <coughs> Excuse me. If you said light alone, you were right. How did Newton make the color magenta? By combining red and blue pigments, by combining red and blue lights, by using a prism and white light only, or by turning the lights off? You said two, by combining red and blue, you are right. According to Newton, which colors are primary colors? CMYK, RGB, RYB, or CMY? RYB, red, yellow, blue. What do we now call the colors that emerge from Newton's prism experiment? CMYK, RGB, the rainbow, or the visual spectrum? The rainbow. <clears throat> All right, so that was a little bit of a review there from last week. Now we're gonna move on to vibrations, not so good vibrations. So vibrating colors are an occurrence wherein the edges of two directly adjacent colors appear to merge, blur and glow, giving the illusion of motion. High saturation could give that, similar brightness could give that vibration, complementary colors can give that vibration, the edges blur and a challenge of readability are some issues with that. When you look at this, it kind of, woo, kind of makes your eyes go crazy, right? You get that vibration going. When you look at this color, it's kind of more harmonious. You have stuff that pops out, but it's not as bad. Chromostoth, <laughs> bear with me here. Chromasteropopsis, <laughs> it's a big word, is uh, what you get when you see, oh, look at that. It's going to give us like some buggy eyes right here. You got that blue on the red and the red on the blue. But what that is is a visual illusion whereby the impression of depth is conveyed in two-dimensional <clears throat> color images. Some colors appear to recede while some seem to float forward in visual perception. So it's almost like blue is kind of coming towards you and red's receding back in this example. Light and shade subtly change the color of objects and let us know which parts of them are advancing or retreating. We notice that color can fade when it becomes very distant and that at some distances, different colors seem to blend together. Color is one of the cues that we use to understand the physical world. <clears throat> Colors turn 3D, so never pair green, red, and blue together on a page and expect people to read it. You know, I've had some people do that with type, putting red type on green, for example, uh, and vice versa, and it's just not, it's just not gonna work. <coughs> Excuse me. Here is a link. Let me open this up here. Oh, this one doesn't actually go to anything. Um, go back here. I will try to get this link up here. It's, uh, it's not quite working for me here. Color vibrations. 
Yes, let me get that up um, on the announcements after this and we can definitely take a look at that. That might be a great resource. I just can't click on it right now. All right, so just a little review there and let's go into your discussion. I'll read over and let me know if you have any questions after I read over this, you know, you can email me. I know you're not in the lecture now. Just let me know if you have any questions and then I'll go into your assignment. All right, so color, meaning, and emotion. What you're gonna do is you're gonna read through this background. I won't read it word for word, but definitely read through this. The prompts I will read. <coughs> After I cough here, excuse me. In this discussion, we will return once more to the museum exhibit we discussed in week one. The museum has asked you for input regarding the color scheme used for promotional materials. As the exhibit is about color itself, they are unsure which specific colors to use for promotional purposes. One part of the marketing team thought that reds and yellows would be good energetic colors, while another part of the marketing team thought blues and greens would be calming and more serious to reflect the serious nature of the museum. <clears throat> A third group thinks using no color at all and having all promotional materials be black and white would be the best outcome. How might you explain to them the different emotional meanings tied to color? How would you explain to them that the impact color might have on consumer purchasing and audience appeal? As Goethe believed that color perception was very much tied to past experiences, what other brands might a campaign with lots of red or yellows remind viewers of? What sort of experiences and ideas are tied to the colors of green and blue? If, as Goethe believed, colors only have meaning in relation to other colors, what, what feel would totally color, would a totally color-free or black and white color scheme for the promotional materials have? <clears throat> so for your citation, you might use articles that show examples of color usage in contemporary logo and experience design. You can also find articles from experts that suggest how the psychology of color impacts its perception and meaning. All right. So just kind of make sure you're following, I know you're not responding to two peers, but just make sure you're, you know, following the guidelines for the um, initial post. So a lot of questions here, and you might want to copy this and paste it into a Word file, kind of work out your answers, do a spell check, grammar check, and make sure you have everything, you know, kind of in there. So think about color and how it, you know, it might impact a consumer purchasing the audience appeal. <clears throat> and how might you explain to them the different emotional meanings tied to color? Um, so think about all those things. Um, color theory, you know, when you, you really have to think about the audience that you're speaking to as well. So kind of keep that in mind when you're responding or when you're actually creating the initial post. Oh, it looks like uh, you already posted here. So I'm gonna have to take a look at that. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Um, yeah, just let me know. I'm going to read through your, your uh, discussion post um, after, so I apologize, but I didn't quite get to that yet, and so I just saw that today. All right, week two assignment, color and card making. This is going to be kind of an interesting assignment here. Um, read through the background. It talks about you know colors and greeting cards because that's what you're going to be doing for this um, this project here. So in this assignment, assignment you will use Photoshop. Open up Photoshop while I'm talking here. In digital painting techniques to create in creating three greeting cards. You will not use any photos or illustrations. Colors, lines, and shapes will be the only visuals. Each card will need to have a design that spans both the front and back of the card and be blank on the interior. In addition, each card will have text on the front that is appropriate for each occasion. The color scheme, font choice, and final card size is up to you. <clears throat> so you have card one, the audience is a toddler, three to five three to five years old, and the text is happy birthday. So think about, you know, what color that you're going to use, what typeface you're gonna use based on the audience being a toddler. 
you probably wouldn't use darker colors, right? Um, number card number two, audience, recent college graduate, text, congrats, congratulations on your graduation. Um, obviously, that would be more of an, a, you know, uh, older audience there. So maybe you have a darker color scheme, more refined typeface. And card number three, your audience is a grieving friend, wishing you peace and comfort. So maybe more softer colors for that with maybe more softer typography. Please follow these steps. Design each of your cards in Photoshop as a flat file showing both the front and back of the card. Create a new Photoshop file and mock-up of your card into one of the available free templates in the Adobe Marketplace. <clears throat> you can search the Marketplace through your Creative Cloud app located at the top of your screen. When you're finished, you should have six Photoshop files, three flat files, and three mock-ups. You're gonna create an InDesign document that is 11 by 17 that contains three pages. Place your flat file and mocked up file together so that we can see both side by side on each page. And in addition, please put your name in the and put your name and the name of each card occasion on each page. You can export your file as a PDF. All right. <clears throat> so the size is completely up to you. So let's go ahead and start this. Okay, so we need InDesign too. So let me open that up. I already have Photoshop open. Let me create, usually, a, you know, a greeting card size is like, what, five by seven. That's a typical size. I'm going to do five by five just to be different. Do like a square square thing here but five by five would be what canvas size because it's going to be double that because it's going to be front and back so we want the width to be double that so 10 by 5 okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this with a little um, guide here so I know that this is the back and this is the front on the right hand side so think of it as when you when you flatten out a card the front is on the right and the back is on the left. All right, I'm just gonna fill this with white just to get a color going on here. All right, so the first, and I'm just gonna attempt to do this here, the first one is the toddler, toddler audience happy birthday. So when you think about the toddler audience, you probably want a color theme that is toddler themed here. All right, in that regards, what I would suggest that you do, and let me bring this up here. Um, is, let me go to swatches. <clears throat> Um, what I want to do is bring up <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So you can bring up your okay. I'm trying to see here. We have you can bring up brushes because we have we're going to be kind of doing um, everything with brushes. It says here. Um, Colors, lines, and shapes will be the only visual, okay? Colors, lines, and shapes. So everything will be color lines. You could do with your <coughs> pen tool or shape tools. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> colors, lines, and shapes. 
So you don't really want any pictures. You don't really want any, you just want shapes. So very simple, simple. All right, let me start with the typography first. So let me write happy birthday. And I'm gonna choose a font that is um, reminiscent of a toddler, something very fun. And let me pull this over so I can see it being applied. Actually, let me bring up my character palette here. Bring up your character palette and now you can kind of go through and look at you know, these examples on the right here. So choose a typeface that obviously is reminiscent of a toddler, something fun, um, kind of organic, but you know, simple. Let me see if I can find something really fun here. <laughs> Got lots of tight. Uh, if you can't find anything, you can always go and find something uh, through the free type. Um, typography pages so you can download free typography different fonts. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> I thought I had some really fun type typefaces in here and now I'm not seeing any that I was thinking of using. Okay, this one's actually really fun. Let's see if that's gonna work. This one's very, Youthful and fun, it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of has that vibe going on here. I don't know if I can change the color of this. Let me see if I can. Yes, I can. Okay, and then when you think about toddlers, you probably think about more of the primary colors. So we want to keep it simple um, with some, you know, simple elements here. So maybe in this instance, you know, maybe your uh, <coughs> using the custom shape tool, oops, sorry, um, custom shape tool to create shapes. There's different shapes up here that you can kind of play around with. Um, something like that where you're putting it in the background and maybe adding, oops, the color. <clears throat> um, let's see here. We want this to be the primary color here. And then put it back behind your layer. This is, there we go. And then choose a color. Woo! All right. So, you know, kind of play around with it. See what you can come up with. Something fun and interesting. I don't know about that green, but. Do some blue here. So I'm doing all primary colors. You know, obviously you want to see it, so let's make this a little bit bigger here. You better read it. But you can use lines, shapes, whatever, whatever you think works for this. And see how it kind of um, extending this out on the left hand side here. So it's, um, it flows to the other side. And then I'm gonna kind of 
rotate this. Let's give it more of a movement to it. There we go. All right. And then why don't we just give it, let's see here if we can uh, a little drop shadow. Back then. Here we go. And you can get that same drop shot if you do an alt drag to your shapes as well. Just kind of give a little pop there. There's like all kinds of different things that you can do. Okay. So let's just say that this is this looks good. Um, we for this particular piece here. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, create a document 11 by 17 with three pages in InDesign. So let's go ahead and set that up to 11 by 17, three pages. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but switch over to InDesign. So you should have three pages, 11 by 17. All right. The next thing it says, when uh, you're going to place your flat file in mocked up file. So you have market place through your creative app. And we're going to take a look at that in a second here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'll go to Marketplace. I'm gonna share my desktop here. So go up to your Creative Cloud, go to Assets, Marketplace, and look up card or green card. Let's put a greeting card. Or just card. And look up a, if you can't find it in here, you could definitely go online and download a mock up too. Looks like there's business cards. Yeah, so I mean, I would say, let me go back here. I could probably find something online a little bit quicker here. Let me look up and I'm gonna share this with you so you can see what I'm doing. You can do this as well, because it's free. So just type, go into Google and just do a search for free PSD mockups. Like mockup world would be one of them. Now, the only thing with this, you might want to look up the mock-up first before you start the size of your greeting card. I just thought about this because that'll affect how it looks. Like my size is kind of a strange size, so they might not have a square greeting card. Oh, here's one right here. That looks square. So let me click on here. And let's download this one for free. So this would be the mock-up that you would download.
percent. Download this on my computer. There we go. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. And go back to our Photoshop file. And what we're going to do is we're going to name this DES D14 card one. I'm going to save it as a PSD file on my desktop. And then I'm also going to save it as a JPEG. That way, oh, quality is low. Let me change that. Make sure that's high. So we're going to do JPEG again, but we're going to change this setting here to high. Okay, so then you're going to go to the next one. Um, you can hide your layers here and use the same file. Actually, you didn't need to name it one because this can be the same file. It's just you can hide the layers here. And you can group these layers together in their own group folder here. And we'll just name this toddler card. We'll do another group. We'll call this. Um, graduate card. And another folder called sympathy card. Okay, so let's go to the graduate card, and the type for that is um, congratulations on your graduation. So think about the colors that would be more appropriate for that. You put the type in there, and also the type. Probably more subdued, you wouldn't obviously do this typeface. Um, so you would, you know, use a more mature typeface or something that looks con congratulatory. Even something as simple as this. You know, you can kind of play around with with the, um, the way that it's that's set in here. But you get the idea. You know, it's a more classic typeface. All right, and maybe, just maybe, it's a more serious. Um, a more serious card, so we're going to do very serious color, which is black, and maybe kind of add some other things in here as well. Now, remember, you're just doing line and simple stuff. So you could take the pen tool and you can do kind of simple lines here. If you do a line, how you change the line color is you would go to stroke. I'm sorry, paths. You make it a path. Nope, actually. We are going to go to One second here, let me change this. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I think we need to make it a path. But Oh no, one second here. Layers, info, color. Trying to think about how I would change this to a white, but let's put it on a different layer. There we go. Let me see if I zoom in here. I'm just not seeing it because it's really thin. Nope. Very well. Let's do this. Take a brush tool. You can even go to special effects brushes. You have splatters, kind of cool to play with. You like little key tones you can play with. Kind of neat to uh, play around with that stuff. I would say if you want to do the line tool, you probably have to do a closed path here. Like a shaped, shaped path. Press direct selection tool here. Oops, let me zoom in. I can't see what's going on here. Here we go. Just like an illustrator, you can, oops, hold the shift key down when I do this. If you hold the shift key down and pull these out, they're gonna not um, get crooked in any way. All right, now we can fill it with the color. So let's do a formal blue, like a dark blue. Actually. You know, and you could do something where it's, you know, complementary colors for this color scheme. Let's do a little bit of a gold color here. Okay, and then um, let's see, brushes. We saw some really cool brushes in here that you can play around with. Try media brushes, wet brushes, special effect brushes. Let me do some splatters. Be kind of cool. course you know you want to do that where it's appropriate color here so let's pick a maybe like a darker gray kind of give it some texture here and we're going to pull this up above that so you can see it This line a little thinner. You know, so think about what color scheme would look good for this particular audience. I 
I kind of like the idea of maybe rotating this a little bit, kind of like going up, you know. All right. You have line, you have texture. You see this. And again, you know, we're in layers here. So that's the graduation card. The sympathy card. And let's hide that. Would be more of wishing you peace and comfort, I believe, is the text there. But as far as the color, I would probably go really, really, really like soft. Let's do a layer here. Like pastel colors. You know, maybe like um this like a brown. You can even do white. Something very subdued. You know, maybe this is very understated. What else can we use here? We got shapes in here, mind tool. So maybe let's see, um, let me do circles, this one. All right, so let's make this a little more, more opaque so you can kind of see through it. Let me do like, a, we can do kind of like a copy of that and go down every time as far as the opacity. Different. I'll kind of show you what's going on here. So I just made it different opacity. So it's kind of like, Echoing. And I think what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to reverse this out. Okay, so to make sure you be able to read it, and I'm going to copy all those and scale this down a little bit. Just to give it something interesting here. All right, so I'm just kind of trying to make this more visually interesting by just kind of playing around with the elements here. There we go. So just taking simple shapes, playing around with that. Okay, so 
So say if I wanted to save this, then I just go file save. Everything's lumped into my sympathy card. So if I wanted to see each one of these, let's open these back up again. We can see the differences. So see the color differences? There's the toddler, graduate card, sympathy card. I'm gonna save this. And um, I'm going to actually end this. And when we meet on Friday, I'm gonna show you how we apply this to um, the mock-up and then also um, how to place it into your final document for um, in InDesign for your submission. All right. So let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, I, I'm not completely done. We'll kind of um, do the rest here in uh, uh, for the next lecture on Friday. We'll kind of go over how to place this into your mock-ups and then also your final presentation. All right. All right, Melissa, let me know if you have any questions. And, you know, I'm, I'm here. Hopefully this uh, lecture helped you go forward with your projects. Let me know if you have questions about your assignment one. Um, I'll be waiting for your revised um, piece to be resubmitted to evaluate your work so we can change that grade. So let me know. Uh, let me know if you need anything. All right, thank you. Have a great night.